Hi, I'm Catherine Reed Day, host of the St. Paul Forum. And coming up today on the show, we have Judy uh, Melman and James Farnsworth of the Friends School and the fabulous Friends Plant Sale. That's coming up next on the St. Paul Forum. Welcome to the St. Paul Forum. I'm Catherine Reed Day, and joining me today are Judy Melman and James Farnsworth from the Friends School, and we're going to talk today a little bit about both the school and the upcoming wonderful plant sale that they sponsor each year. Tell us a little bit, Judy, you are a parent mm -hmm. at the Friends School, so you've been involved for a while. Tell us a little bit about why the Friends School is special. What makes it special? Yeah, I have two children there, one a third grader and now a seventh grader, and we've been there since both of them were in kindergarten. And the Friends School is uh, it's, it's run by, it's a Quaker school, and it is a small independent school, and it's um, the style in which it teaches is um, progressive education, which is really a child-centered um, learning environment. And... Um, a lot of project work, a lot of independent learning, um, and I know and, James and actually was a here. student there, so <laughs> we're going to turn to the expert. So James, you just you are now a, 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 a freshman at Highland mm -hmm. uh, Senior High, but you did you attend all your years at the Friends School? I actually didn't. I came to Friends School in eighth grade, okay. or actually, excuse me, in fifth grade. Fifth grade. So I was just there for the middle school, fifth middle through school. eighth grade, and I came from Seward Montessori and. Just kind of looking for a place like Friends School with the smaller class sizes, more tighter community, and some more opportunities than you would have in a big high school with a lot of, or I mean with a big middle school or public school with a lot of people in it. So, so how big are the uh, individual classes? Uh, what's the size of the school? Um, know? Yeah, well, I think the whole school is 146 or something so like really that. Intimate, yeah. intimate school. Yes, mm -hmm. and so the, the individual classes are kind of, 20 or so, maybe? Does mm -hmm. that seem about right? Yeah, when I was there, my graduating class was 20 kids. Okay. So. Yeah. And tell us a little bit about what it means to be um, the kind of the atmosphere of the environment, the learning environment. What is it that, that you liked about that special learning? How would you describe it? I probably would describe that the commu community was probably the most important thing at Friends School. With their progressive education, since it has Quaker values, the school is running Quaker values, it follows SPICE, which is an acronym for Simplicity, Peace, Integrity, Community, and Equality. Ooh, now that was a big handful. You went so fast. <laughs> Let's do that again. Yes. Um, SPICE stands spice, for? Which was Simplicity, Peace, Integrity, Community, and Equality. And those are kind of the core values that Friends School is ran on and their educational values. and. I think everybody, where most people would agree that the community is really what makes Friends School stand out, and makes it a really wonderful place and experience and opportunity. And as a parent, how did you make the decision that you wanted to join this? Well, this actually, school? what happened was we went to an information night way back when we were looking at schools, and one of the things that the Friends School does is it has the graduating eighth graders, the middle schoolers, actually mm -hmm. um, facilitate the the parents information night and so they answer questions and they lead tours and I was just so um, captivated by how poised and um, competent these eighth grade kids were that I felt that that was something they must be doing something right and as it turns out there's really there really is just a um, and I think what James said is true that the community aspect there's really a connection between all of the different students and different grades within the school as well as between the, the students and the teachers and uh, all the parents are, are pretty well involved and so it cr just creates an environment for um, a kind of uh, really involved growth that that um, I think leads to a, f a really complete um, person you know it's not just about the three R's or anything it's mm -hmm. really a, um, a broad approach. yeah holistic mm -hmm. approach yes well said. and so it we're going to be talking specifically about one very special activity, which is the, the plant sale, which we're all excited about because mm -hmm. it's we're thinking about spring and summer. Yeah. But uh, 
so when you think about this curriculum and the way the students are involved, it sounds like we could could find you not just in the school that that there's there's involvement community involvement am I making that up or is like is, is your activity that's community related primarily within the school or do you in other cases beside the the plant sale get involved directly in the community no I'd say that there is one of the special things about friends schools that they have those hands-on opportunities so it's not just staying in the school building staying in one classroom all day it's actually going out and applying what you're learning to your life and actually next to friends school where Friends School is located in the Hamelin Midway neighborhood, there's a sky rise that, there's a high rise that is primarily with elderly adults and we've actually, there's a partnership between the school and the people in the high rise. So we've been over there and we've done oral reports on them. You know, we do things for the seniors in the high rise and we actually, you know, we have this community garden project that may be in the works at one point. So there's a lot of things like that. And we also have had this partnership with Central, which is a um, Spanish you know, kind of community center on Chicago and Lake Street. And we've, our previous Spanish teacher had a really good relationship with them and we go over oh, there. Oh, the, uh, uh, the um, Mercado Central, that, the Chicago and, or no, I think, it's a, I think it's a social service agency. A social yeah, service yeah, agency, yeah. okay. All mm -hmm. right, gotcha. Mm -hmm. So the partnership was with this agency? And what kinds of things did you do? They had, you're speaking Spanish there? Then? Yeah, so we went over there as part of the Spanish class. And we'd have a trip in the spring every time. And they have a food shelf there. They have a clothing shelf there. And primarily we went to work with the toddlers in the preschool. And that was really cool. We, I think we actually we had a visit in the fall and the spring. So we'd see them in the fall and then come back in the spring and they'd recognize us and we'd kind of be matched up with somebody with a kid from the preschool. So that was a really cool experience. Mm -hmm. So, And so when you look at it from an a outcomes perspective, um, how does the school uh, rate in terms of your success factors that a lot of people look at? It's academic achievement yeah. or, or college access Well, I think as, and so as forth. evidenced by James here, <laughs> it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, in general, yeah, the school does really well, you know, on, on whatever measures um, go into, I, like for example, when it's a K-8, so at, at eighth grade they, we need to figure out, um, students need to decide where they're going to go to high school. And in general, um, there's, you know, a, a high level of pretty much acceptance anywhere. Uh, and then, and then I don't know, you could probably speak better to how it, how you felt your education prepared you for for fitting in, but I think uh, in general the, the academics are really strong, mm -hmm. and it seems like it. So you're feeling like you're fitting in pretty well with you're you're able to excel in your current setting. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, having recently gone through, or not that recently, but a little having gone through the high school selection process after or as leaving friend school, and people go a huge variety of places. They go to public schools, private schools, charter schools, and I think I've really found my niche, so to speak, at Highland. I mean. Friends School definitely prepared me in very many ways that you that because of the small setting in the community and just the way that Friends School operates that I wouldn't have been able to get coming from another school and then going to Highland. That's great. Well, let's turn our attention to this sale yeah. because um, uh, it's it's the time of year when mm -hmm. some of us know many people know about the Friends plant sale, mm -hmm. which is all volunteer mm -hmm. led and has been happening for 25 years. Well, actually, this is the 24th year. 24th, okay. It started the second year the school was in existence and um, was started by a single parent, Henry Feldseth, who's still involved with the sale and is intimately involved, and he's kind of a leader. But he started it um, just with um, a single sheet of paper was the list of plants that he was selling. He just wanted to do a fundraiser for the school that was kind of, kind of had a positive spin on things and... Um, also generated some got got the students involved. It was kind of a win-win kind of set kind of a vision that he had, and um, he sort of single-handedly took it on and started it. And it's grown over the years into just this enormous effort that has. We have over a thousand volunteers now putting on the sale at the State Fair Grandstand every year. And it didn't used to be so. Those of us who who've gone over a number of years, it was at the school for many many years. Yes. Exactly. When did it transition to the new location? Does anyone remember? I think it was 2006. Is that? So it's been quite a while. Or maybe 2000. 
seven? It's been yeah. it's been a few years. Yeah, it, it really it basically it outgrew the. It was in the it was in the yard at the school, mm -hmm. and Henry was actually pitching a tent and sleeping outside to <laughs> protect the keep the plants from getting stolen. Oh. And then um, I think it just got to the point where it needed more space and just jumped to this. Kind of took the leap of faith and jumped to this huge space, and it's grown since then even to fill the entire grandstand and beyond. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. that's huge! It is huge. So you're holding a catalog. This is something you can find um, that that's either mailed to you or mm -hmm. it's also something you can pick up in the um, lots of different public settings, right? Yeah, is it should be available on newsstands throughout town. Um, there's also it's also on our in full, it can be found on the website, um, friendschoolplantsale.com. Mm -hmm. And at, actually what's nice about the website is you can find not only the content of the catalog, but there's also, um, it's kind of, um, there's a, a list on there where you can yeah. do your, um, you. you can plan your shopping. And it Maybe shows, nice. in this actually, in here we have a handy dandy little chart about how to do the sale. The sale, it's kind oh, of, that's fun. it's, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh -huh. you can bring your own wagon bring and your own write wagon. down your, Great idea. your purchases. Um, so anyway, the website has a lot of additional information beyond what the catalog has. The, and um, I know a lot of people who are, whether serious gardeners or not, like to get the catalog early as soon as it first comes out and peruse it and that's figure out what they're going to have. That's why I wanted to talk about it early in this is that it's so comprehensive and, it, and the sale is so large. So we'll try to, they're going to see some footage on, uh, they're going to see the space itself. It is yeah. such a large sale and it has always seemed like a large sale to me. Mm -hmm. The, the pre-planning seems really important. Maybe, um, James, just talk a little bit about what have you actually done around the sale? What have your direct experiences been in your roles related to the, the plant sale? Yeah, well, I came into Friends School at fifth grade, mm -hmm. and the fifth through eighth graders, the whole middle school is actually works at the sale. We're there starting the Wednesday week of the sale, so helping with the setup and all that. And then on Friday, we actually are volunteers at the sale because the sale is open on Friday. And my experience in fifth and sixth grade was just kind of as a regular student coming that those couple days before the sale and just helping set up. We unload the trucks and take the plants off the carts that they come in and put them on the different shelves and just kind of since the sale is such a huge operation you know just kind of help with whatever is needed and then as I stepped into this student as I stepped in the student role for the last two years with the plant sale planning committee that meets you around I helped at the info desk the information desk that we have and just kind of you know I mean it's hard to explain what you mm -hmm. do at the plant sale as a volunteer because there's just so many different so many things, things to, to do. do. And uh, one thing I'm thinking is, uh, are there some people uh, who are wearing a certain? You, either you're wearing a T-shirt or a vest or something. That's something I remember is that you could find mm -hmm. the students. I remember the students and also helping people carry things to their mm -hmm. cars. I remember that as a very significant mm -hmm. feature because you get there and you're going to overdo it. I hope that's yes. what you all hope is that you just go crazy and buy too much. It's stuff, hard right? not to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But is that, I mean, am I remembering right that there's yeah. something that they're wearing? Yeah, the, all the students and actually all the volunteers throughout the wholesale have tie-dye t-shirts oh, on. Okay. So green and blue tie-dye t-shirts and green aprons that say Friends School Plant Sale. And I believe there, there'll be people in pink hats. And it's mostly the tie-dye shirts and the green aprons that you can identify a volunteer or a student at any point during the sale. So as a student, here's one of the things I'm just really curious about. I know that this initial volunteer was probably a master gardener and he knew or maybe wasn't but he knew a lot about the plants uh, do you as students need to learn something about the you know what what's that you know what's that thing there where are those <laughs> tomatoes or where is that native prairie plant I'm looking for yeah I mean I myself actually don't know a lot about the plants <laughs> at all for some and it didn't transform you into a horticulturist no and somehow I've maintained my innocence <laughs> of not knowing anything about plants or gardening okay. throughout this whole process but no I mean when we're taking the plants off the shelves and looking through the catalog, you know, and since the plant sale is based on a numbering system and all the rows and specific spots where the plants are numbered, you know, it's more of doing, you know, if we can get them there, but also, I mean, people recognizing all oh, that's the hostel that they have in their family's garden, you know, and that. And we actually recently, I think either a couple of years ago at Friends School, we had, we did a renovation of the gardens at oh, around the school the gardens mm -hmm. the grounds themselves mm -hmm. of the, the grounds school of the nice campus, yeah. so they're a, they're a showpiece now 
Yeah, and we actually, to people, some of the people who serve you around in the plant sale planning community and really involved came in and talked to us about, you know, it's not just we're putting that random thing that looks like a grass, you know, piece of grass in the gardens, what it is, you know, how it's native to Minnesota, you know, and since we did rain gardens, you know, specific information according to rain gardens, so mm -hmm. we do learn a fair amount about, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. the specific plant knowledge to be able to go to the sale and just year-round. You know. well, if you're just joining us, I'm speaking with Judy Melman and James Farnsworth about the Friends School and the Friends Plant Sale that's coming up in May. So, yes, you're going to add something. So I'm excited to know that he was learning something about the plants. Yes. Like that is a lifelong skill. If you know something, if you can grow your own food, it's quite a skill. And that, But if you're also familiar with what's around you. So do you see that? Well, I was, just gonna, I was going to make the comment that there's the sale is really comprehensive and it really applies to everybody for everybody from like just the complete novice gardener to someone who's a master gardener and been mm -hmm. working with plants their whole lives and so there's I think there's something like 2400 varieties of plants that are sold there and there are we there are master gardeners on um, on call you know you can sit down you can ask get your questions answered and um, there's also uh, what we call a garden fair that's kind of out in the adjoining area and there's a number of um, featured workshops and things going on and it's um, a three-day sale it's not just a one-day event you already Correct. probably referenced that but it's worth and and just tell us again the date did I even say that right it's, is it May? I, we may not have it's May 10th 11th okay. and 12th this year so that's it's Mother's, Mother's Day, Day weekend, weekend. Yep. yeah very smart um, so and it's a great time of year because it's not in Minnesota we all want to plant too soon and uh, right. <laughs> so I think most people say you've got to wait till you know at least that midpoint of May to get everything in. So it's a nice, nicely timed. Um, you know, we've talked a little bit about the fact that it requires some planning. You know, what are some tips that you would give people about the sale? Because uh, honestly, I've been there. I, uh, you know, I'm a little crowd averse, and yeah. uh, but you know, a lot of people are waiting at the door, or you know, do they sleep out? Well, I do have a couple <laughs> things to say about that. I'm actually we. Um, the first couple years that we were at the grandstand, it was a little chaotic and we were still kind of getting our feet under us about how to manage that kind of a space. And so anybody who's staying away because they think that the lines are too long should know that we've got that under control now. And what we do right. is we have a wristband system where oh. you show up. If, if, you, if you choose to come at the beginning time, it's kind of the really... It's, it, there's big energy around the mm -hmm. early, Friday and Saturday morning. And so if you come at the early time, you'll be given a wristband and then... Um, you can go off and you can shop in the garden fair and they will call your wristband number over a PA system. You don't need to stand there in line. Oh, and then when you come back and your wristband number is called, people are being let in on like 100 at a time. So it keeps the, the pace of the sale from getting too crazy. And mm -hmm. so you, um, you know, if you if you're crowd averse, you, can, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's not too crazy in there. And then they kind of, it sort of regulates the the path of people going through. And then in addition to that, the, I know that there's been some issues with checkout lines in the past and that we've kind of managed. We've gotten mm -hmm. a system down with that as well. And so... Is there a per? I can't remember, do you have to buy a ticket to get in? No. It's, it is no. free admission. That's okay. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing I was going to say about that too is if you, if you are wanting to come in a more quiet time and not fight the crowds and you're um, not needing to be the first to get in, that uh, the afternoon times tends to be a little quieter and mm -hmm. you can kind of generally walk right in without a problem. And then Mother's Day itself, is there anything special and featured on that day besides the fact that it's discounted? It is discounted. If you find anything left, though, that's the risk, right? There's always something left. But, there's, yeah. Um, there's there's a lot left. It's just that you might not get what you have on your list. You want you have to, it's a little bit more iffy, but that's kind of part of the fun of it. Mm -hmm. And it yes, it's everything is a third off uh, of the, the of original itself. price. But is there anything else you uh, any special activities for Mother's Day, or is it just strictly the end of the sale? Plants. Plants. <laughs> Go oh, I know. One of the things that I was going to say is we can um, for if you're looking for a Mother's Day gift, there are gifts plant sale gift certificates uh, available, which you can either get from the school or you can go to the website and print those out. So I guess that's a special Mother's Day thing. I know, yeah, my special Mother's Day thing is that I get to be at the plant <laughs> You work really hard. Um, you know, one of the, we're talking all about the sale itself, but there is a purpose behind the sale, and I wonder if you want to talk a little bit about that, too, that you're specifically raising some funds for some very specific reasons. Um, is that right? Yes, uh, all proceeds of the sale go to the Friends School Minnesota Scholarship Fund. 
and it benefits, I don't know the exact percentage of how many students the scholarship fund affects? Or I think, you know? well, the number that, the numbers I remember are that it raises over $200,000 a year wow. for mm. the scholarship fund. It's, it's the equivalent of having an endowment of $5 million is yeah, the number that I heard. That's a lot of money. And that um, it, it goes to tuition aid, so it allows mm -hmm. a lot of people to attend the school who would not otherwise so be able to So the school is so. actually a private school, it is, yes. and therefore has um, private tuition. Yes. It's not a charter school. In Minnesota, exactly. we get, you know, people exactly. forget mm -hmm. that there are all these, we have so many options in mm -hmm. Minnesota, and a charter school is like a public school, and the public schools, and then they have, we have private schools, and so Friends right. is a private school, and is there, what is the annual tuition? Uh, well, it kind of ranges. ranges. So you, it depends on your financial need, presumably. Is that what yeah. you mean? Yeah, mm -hmm. and it also it depends on what grade the, oh, okay. the child is. And um, So you'd suggest that they look at the website if yes. they wanted to learn more about what it means to, to uh -huh. go. And then as well as, and they can also contact the school if they want more information about um, So, but $200,000 is significant. It's a, it's a lot of money. As you say, it is worth a $5 million endowment. So that is a remarkable effort. And it sounds like you feel like it is really teaching a lot of people a lot of skills. Do you know if anyone's gone on to uh, a career in... Oh, what that a good kind question. of marketing or uh, anything like that? Have you ever heard? Yeah, you know, I know somebody graduated and went to the Agriculture, Farm, and Sciences Academy, and that's a high school, a charter high school yeah. in Invergrove Heights. And I don't know if that was inspired by the plant cell exactly, but I don't know. Yeah, I know it also mm -hmm. gives rise to some some interesting science fair projects. Oh, oh sure. Um, yeah which are, can be, you know, plant and environment mm -hmm. related. Also, it's just, in addition to the plant aspect of, it's just a really amazing communitarian sort of event. It's mm -hmm. really, um, it's all volunteer run. There's yeah. um, over a thousand volunteers who participate. And by the way, if anybody listening to this would like to volunteer, yeah, you can... Yeah, just about to ask you that. Yes, you can People, sign up on our website. Mm -hmm. um, are there some special benefits for volunteering? Actually. Yes, there actually are. We have on Thursday night before the sale, which officially opens on Friday, there's the volunteer pre-sale. So if you're uh -huh. volunteering, <laughs> you get a little golden, yellow golden postcard, which gives you an admittance into the pre-sale. And that's a really cool opportunity that a lot of people like, is having the very first access to the plants and kind of seeing what this delay of the land is a lot of people who go I'm to the volunteer sure. pre-sale come back <laughs> multiple times the rest of the weekend. That's a pretty mm -hmm. great way to incentivize your volunteers for mm -hmm. those who are, who mm -hmm. love to garden. Right, get, exactly. Because really the the plant selection is and so it's a lot of fun. Oh yeah, I mean I'm sure that you said you just were talking about communitarian, so yeah. it's a, a community of people who are who who grow and become to know each other. Um, yeah. I assume you have some regulars. Anyone any good <laughs> stories about your regular volunteers? Anyone that. I'm guessing there's some a wide range of ages too. Absolutely, I would say everything. Well, from, certainly because you have the school. I mean, we have yeah, kids yeah. kids from kindergarten and first grade all the way up to um, well, we have plenty of a number seniors. of seniors mm -hmm. and grandparents who mm -hmm. are also involved. And and it, and they, you don't have to be affiliated with the school. You know, people from all over the community are involved mm -hmm. with the sale. Yeah, and I know that the school puts on an alumni shift. That happens, I believe, in Saturday night. The alumni do tidying around the sale. Oh, so a fair amount of alumni come back and continue to be involved in the sale. I mean, even a lot of seniors in high school still make a point to come back because they love the plant sale so much and love being able to work there, volunteer there when they were in middle school at friend's school. And I think that's really cool that mm -hmm. all the alumni come back every year. And I just wanted to um, circle back to your question, too, about you asked if there's any good specific volunteer stories. And to me, the most compelling volunteer stories are the um, the sort of core group of people who do the planning and uh, sort of work year-round. Basically, they give all of their time um, and they work from not just for the week of the sale, but for the entire the year, year planet. mm -hmm. um, planning and buying plants and setting things up and thinking things through. And um, um, just there's a there's a a few people who've been doing it almost since the beginning of the wow. sale, and they're quite amazing. I appreciate that you bring that up because so many people do just, we focus on the t time itself, and mm -hmm. these things all take yeah. so much more time than people realize. Um, uh, it sounds, it's it's pretty rare that something like this, especially a specific kind of fundraiser, has lasted this long. It doesn't right. sound like it's at risk. 
to end. I mean, you've been able to sustain this core group. There's still enough life and vibrancy to keep it going? Well, we, we sure hope. I yeah. mean, I think what where we're at right now is we're working on sustainability mm -hmm. and really kind of getting it into a place where it's not dependent on any in single individual to pull right. it off and that we can really keep it going because, um, yeah, it's got, it's got some magic to it. Mm -hmm. And it really, um, I, th I think it, it deserves to keep, keep going. And I assume you would accept gifts, both uh, other kinds of charitable support for the work absolutely simply to even maybe to support the fair, the the uh, event itself well we do invite people to round up on their purchases if they'd like mm. and everything every dollar that goes that comes in through the plant sale goes directly to the school That's so anything great. over and above our costs can can go directly to that and it is tax deductible and of course if, yes if anybody would like to make an additional contribution to the school that is welcome at any time and so uh, one of the things they want to do is definitely look in their co-ops and grocery stores mm -hmm. and any, libraries, any place uh, where they can find this because it, it, it is a lot yeah. of information yeah. in there. I was going to just comment on how I, I, I mentioned that the original plant yeah. sale catalog was a single sheet of paper. This is now um, 60 pages oh of, my you know, pretty small that alone Fun is stuff. a huge volunteer yeah. effort. <laughs> yes. to, do the students get to participate in the catalog development, or is that all adult-driven? You know, I think there's a core group of people that, I think it's mostly adult-driven, yeah. that do the copy editing, mm -hmm. really work on the catalog year-round. But I know that right inside the plant sale this year, there's an article from the student representative. So the person that, the student that is at Friends School now that is doing, that are serving it on the spot on the planning committee that I did when I was at Friends School, she has an article in there mm -hmm. kind of talking about how much the plant sale means to the students and the school and really offering that perspective. That, That's great. Mm -hmm. And so I take it that both we want everyone to come to the plant sale, but you're also saying that the Friends School experience is something you're hoping people will consider mm -hmm. um, looking at. And is there a school, there's a deadline probably coming up soon to apply, it's something that may, they might be able to find on the website. I'm yeah. sure they'll find admissions are on the website, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, I know there's so. a lot of information Good. about admissions and Good. tuition, the process for tuition aid and all that stuff. And I know they have they have weight pools that go on year-round for the various different classes and grade levels and whatnot. Wonderful. So. Thank you both so very much. That's all we have time for. Come back and see us again next week on the St. Paul Forum.